Jim, so good to see you again. Thanks for joining me on the podcast. Thanks for having me, Ryan. Thank you, everybody who's tuning in to this yeah. uh, brainy conversation. Yeah, I, I was actually looking. Your team reached out to me because you've got the expanded edition of the book coming out. And yeah. I was looking at it. We, I, I don't know if you remember or not, but you and I actually had a conversation very, very early on in my podcasting career. It was in 2017. So yeah. it's been almost, I think it's been almost seven years now since we last yeah. talked. So yeah, well, I definitely do remember because I'm the, Good. the memory guy. Um, congratulations on the, on the huge rise. Well, well-deserved. <clears throat> Thank you, man. That means a lot. That means a lot. Um, you know, as I, was, as I was preparing for our discussion and our conversation today, I, something stood out to me as I was going through all of your work and I have your books and I've read your books and I follow your stuff. And that is this idea of the way that you look at the brain as being the machine between our ears. I don't know why that stood out to me in a way that maybe it had before, but to me, it's pretty amazing what the brain can do. And I think that we just, we don't realize it as men and we definitely don't tap into it to the degree that we certainly can. You know, I, I agree. Uh, the brain is your, for all the guys listening, I mean, it's your number one wealth building asset. Nobody here, it's not like it was hundreds of years ago where it was our our brute strength. Um, and that's good to have also, no doubt. But back sure. in our agricultural age, industrial age, it was our it was our brute strength, not our brain strength. Today, it's uh, not our muscle power, but it's really our mind power. And uh, But you're right, This the faster you can learn, the faster you can earn. You know, we live in this knowledge economy where knowledge is not only power, knowledge is profit. And, uh, but we don't have an owner's manual for this technology, this device, everything you buy, you know, gives you some kind of instructions on how to use it and get the most out of it. But, um, unfortunately not, not our brains. And that's, you know, that, that's why we wrote this expanded version of limitless. Why do you think that is? I, I almost wonder if we look at it like the, um, like, like the appendix, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> like everybody's ha had heard of having your like appendix removed and nobody knows what the hell it does or your thyroid, you know, which yeah. regulates hormones and you're like, but people have their thyroid removed if they have thyroid issues and nobody yeah. knows what these organs do. Is it just lumped into this thing that we don't have any control over? And that's why we don't address it the way we should. Yeah. Even if people are watching this on video, like I have always have a brain on my shirt or on, for connected on social media, I'm always pointed to my brain, but it's always right. to draw attention to the, you know, it's interesting. Yeah. What you see, you take care of, like people see their skin or their car, or their clothes their hair whatever it's you take care better care of it because it's in your awareness you're constantly reminded but we don't see the thing that takes care of us uh, which is which is our brain and so i'm always trying to draw attention to it i also feel like it's this black box that some people think it's uh, intimidating or it's just a little confusing and people don't know how it kind of works it's like this three pound like kind of gooey gray matter but it uh but certainly everything is there and in a world where our brains and our lives are, are constantly it's like we're being assaulted all the time with distraction and forgetfulness and information overload so that's why you know the nature of our work our podcast our books is to help people really reclaim that power back and uh, and show them how their brain works so they can work their brain better I, I'm fascinated because I've I've replayed certain events in my mind, and as I go through them, the manifestations of you know my dreams and hopes and desires, I I can I can with most of these things I can vividly remember a time where it was just a thought I was just thinking mm -hmm. about something, and then to see it come to fruition or you know somebody that might for example uh, manifest health concerns or symptoms from their brain yeah. alone it's actually not not really happening, but their brain is telling them it is, and they're manifesting health problems. It's it's so powerful what this little, like you said, the machine between our ears can do from things that are positive, like manifesting our dreams in reality, into reality, and things that might be destructive, like creating problems that aren't really there and, and uh, dragging us down paths that maybe we shouldn't go down. Yeah, we hear about the power of the brain and beliefs around, like our mindset around things like the placebo effect, there's also this nocebo effect, which are the kind of negative ramifications. If you believe something is not good for you or some kind of prognosis and, or even our internal beliefs, you know, at, at events, people, have, if I do a lot of speaking around the world and 
there's time, I'll do these demonstrations where I'll just hand the microphone to somebody in the audience and say, hey, everybody pass it on, just introduce yourself and I'll maybe memorize 50 or 100 people's names in an audience or the audience will give me 100 words or numbers and we'll do this kind of thing and memorize it forwards and backwards. But I always tell people, I don't do this to impress you. I really do this to express to you what's possible because the truth is every single person listening to this right now, they could do that and a lot more. We just weren't taught. Now, automatically when I say that, I bet some of the guys are thinking like, hey, just uh, no, there's just no way, you know. And but regardless of your age, your background, your career, education level, financial situation, gender, history, IQ, we all could improve. We just aren't. There are no classes, right? Like even take something, something like memory. There was no class back in elementary school or high school on how to improve your memory. They teach you three R's: reading, writing, arithmetic. But what about remembering? What about retention? Socrates said, "Learning is remembering." There's a quote in my new book, Limitless Expanded, where it says, life is the letter C between B and D. Life is C between B and D. Where B stands for birth, D stands for death, life C, choice. You know, I really believe that these difficult times, they could diminish you. These difficult times can distract you or these difficult times, they can develop you. We just ultimately decide what the choices and there are certain choices we can make every single day to give us uh, the brain we desire and the brain that we really deserve. I think so with regards to choices, I think most people would look at a set of circumstances or choices they need to make. And when they're big life choices, they spend a lot of time and energy into making those decisions. It's yeah. the small little decisions on a daily basis that we tend to neglect. So for example, your alarm might go off at 6 a.m. this morning and you have a choice to get up or a choice to stay in bed. And for me anyways, the rationalization is like, oh, you know, I'm going to sleep in for another half an hour. I can work out tomorrow or I, I can catch up on my work a little bit later because I have a gap. It's not the big things. It seems to me that it's the little things that add up over time that create the negative ramifications of our poor choices. I agree. Just like in with our finances, consistency compounds, right? Little by little, a little becomes a whole lot. So those little choices add up to 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 big things in, in our life. And something simple like having make, making a decision, just asking yourself, knowing that our brains control so much that we are the pilot of our minds. We're not the passenger. It's the key to our wealth, our health, our relationships. Um, even something simple like asking yourself throughout the day, is this good for my brain or is this bad for my brain? Something simple, like what I'm watching or who I'm spending time with or what I'm eating right now. Is this something that's good for my brain or is this something that's that's bad? And not that limitless is, the idea is not about being perfect. It's about progress. It's about advancing beyond what you're currently demonstrating or what you believe is possible. But going back to the power of beliefs, I really believe that all behavior is belief driven. If the guys want to create a new result in their life, they have to do a new behavior. That's kind of obvious, right? But in order sure. to do that new behavior, you need a belief that says that's possible. At events, people will pull me aside in the lobby or something. They'll say, I'm so glad you're here and following you as a memory expert. And I just have to tell you in private, I have a horrible memory. And, you know, I'm just not smart enough or I'm too old, whatever, right? And I always say, stop. If you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. If you fight for your limits, they're, they're yours. You know, think about this. Like, imagine your brain is this incredible supercomputer and your self-talk, your thoughts, your beliefs are the program it will run. So if you tell yourself, I'm not good at remembering people's names, you won't remember the name of the next person you meet because you program your supercomputer not to. And so we have to be very conscious, not that you have a negative thought and ruins your life any more than eating that cupcake or donut and ruin your life. But if you ate it, dozens of times a day, every single day, there's going to be a consequence, you know? And so I think, you know, a lot of it starts with our mindset, the set of assumptions and attitudes we, we have about stuff, especially about our, ourselves. So as, as a fellow author, one of the things I've, I've told myself in the past is things like, I'm not a writer. I'm sure you've heard things like that. I'm not a writer, but people have desires and aspirations to write books. Uh, yeah. And, and so I, I purge that thought that negative thought from my mind. And I wrote a couple of books and, and I see the power in that. But I also yeah. wonder if there's any sort of negative negativity or unintended consequence that comes from trying to convince yourself that you're something that you're not right. Yeah. Do you create some sort of internal dialogue? For example, uh, maybe I want to run a marathon, which I do. 
and 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 I haven't proven that I'm a great runner up to this point. I know I'm capable of doing it. Right. But but blowing smoke up my ass for lack of a better term, yeah. does that create any sort of like cognitive dissonance that, that makes an issue for people? I believe that positivity, too much positivity could be toxic in a way that it's actually hurtful because some people are so positive, like they, they, they see something on their body or something they should get looked at, but they're so positive that they don't go to the doctor to get something treated because mm. they just feel like it's going to kind of work out or something in a relationship. There's positive thinking in their beliefs is this is going to be fine. We'll get through this, but they don't change their behavior. I feel like that could create a blind spot in our lives. And so I think it's very important. I'm not even talking about being positive thinking i'm just saying like what's what's most empowering for us at the you know at this moment because all these ideas they're 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 ultimately lies anyway right a lie for me stands for a limited idea entertained it's like it's not true that you're too old or too, too whatever but i would always check myself like we have in limitless expanded like different ways of looking at a problem because often a problem the problem is not often the problem. The problem is usually our mindset, our assumptions, attitudes about the problem. That's the big problem. Meaning that uh, a lot of people come and approach problems in the same way. So I'll give you an example. Something we teach in the, in the new book is something called Six Thinking Hats. And it was uh, credited to Edward de Bono. So we'll turn this into a little masterclass for all the guys. All right, sure. everybody think about a situation, a decision you need to make. You're facing some kind of difficulty. You need to make a decision. Maybe you're putting it off, um, some kind of dilemma, some kind of difficulty. Uh, it doesn't have to be the biggest thing in the world, but just, I like to make things very relevant. Otherwise it's just all theory, right? And just imagine you're sitting at a desk and in front of you, there are six hats and it could be any kind of hats. They could be, they could be sports caps. They could be top hats, whatever, right? But they they all have a color right? So there's six color hats. I want everybody just to imagine you're thinking about this decision this that they need to make, this difficult situation, and reach out and imagine grabbing the white hat and then just putting it on. And so with the white hat, the prime directive, when you're putting on the white hat, you have to look at the situation based on just the facts. And I'll give everyone a little mnemonic trick to remember it. White, like a, like a scientist's lab coat. Everything is just, it's very, it's data, it's facts, it's figures. You have to look at just the information alone. You, you're not feeling about it. You're not thinking this is good or bad. You're not critiquing it. You're just looking at the data, right? So then you look at the situation through a certain lens when you're wearing this cap, right? Now take the cap off and now everybody took the white one away and then put on the, let's say the black, the black hat. And when you put the black one on, uh, this is going to be like the black uh, judge's robes. This is everything that could go wrong, right? This is the devil's advocate. This is uh, this is where the risk is potentially. So you're going to judge the situation. Um, and that's often useful because sometimes uh, we don't look, we just look at, we take off the black hat. Most a lot of people going back to the, the positive thoughts and, you know, is this okay to have? And is there a downside or cognitive bias? Put on the yellow hat and the yellow hat is kind of the opposite of the black hat. It's the optimistic hat. It's mm. like, you're looking at the world, all the things that could go right. And right. it's great that if this fundraising works for you, or this business that you're starting is going to be good, or this marketing initiative, or this health protocol, it's, it's great uh, at one point, but sometimes we need to look at it from you know black hat also, right? But the idea behind this is it gets you out of your own way, because often we're in the same situation, because we look at the situation always the same. And this mm -hmm. forces you in a kind of playful way, gives you permission to see, see it a different way. So you take off the yellow hat, and the yellow is like optimistic, like the sun, right. Right? sunshine so sun or something, sure, yeah, it's like all the good things, right? And then put on the red hat, you put on the red hat and it's kind of like the opposite of the white hat where the white is data, the, the red are all feelings. So what's your intuition tell you, right? How do you feel about this decision over this decision? You, and, you know, maybe it's a relationship or maybe it's like, hey, am I going to go back to school or is going to do that? Or am I going to um, stay, stay at my job and try to get that rate? Whatever it happens to be. Um, so the red hat is like the red heart emotions. You're just filtering through emotions. And then finally, the last couple of hats, the green hat is put on the green hat. This is possibility, like green, um, 
like trees and plants, they grow, right? New grow, thing, new sure. things sprouting. So this is like creativity. It's like, maybe it's not going to school or staying with this job. Maybe it's starting your own business, right? You're looking for another possibility, something that's out of the box, creative. And then finally you take the green hat on and the last hat, the six is the blue hat. You put on the blue hat and this is the manager hat. So the other ones could be done in any order, but the blue always comes last. Because what it does is it listens to all the other answers and all the other perspectives from the other five hats, and then it makes the decision, right? Mm. Blue, like the sky, it just overlooks everything, takes everything in, and then says, okay, I've heard everything. This is the way we're going to go. And so this is just one of the tools, uh, and it's much more detailed than Limitless Expanded, but it's just chock full of like a mental toolbox because most we're not taught how to make good decisions or how to solve problems or how to focus and concentrate or how to remember things. So that's why all the chapters are on those each of those superpowers. This is powerful. For, for me, I tend to be <clears throat> more of an intuitive decision maker. So yeah. the way that I feel about something, it, I, I don't know... It, is intuition different than feeling? Because it doesn't seem like it's just feelings. It, it, to yeah, me, it just it, seems it, so right. It is. So the newest part of the book is all about momentum and how to create momentum in your life. Um, and momentum is that state where you you escape uh, like, the gravity and you have this escape velocity and you have this speed and ease and also enjoyment that comes in your career or in your school or in your health. Now, one of the ways we could do that we created something I've, I've used with clients one-on-one. -on -one. We're making it available for the first time to the general public. And this is really a secret, like unfair advantage. And it's based around brain types. So I realized that it's, you know how in medicine you have personalized medicine based on your genetics or sure. personalized nutrition based on your microbiome. This is personalized learning and performance based on your cognitive type. And there are four cognitive types. And I, in order to create this model, I pulled from things like personality types, like Myers-Briggs. I was inspired by left brain, right brain uh, dominance theory and uh, visual auditory kinesthetic learning styles and multiple intelligence theory and introvert, extrovert. We pull from all these different models. And I realized to simplify it very elegantly, there are four brain types and I made them for animals. And mm. so this will give you power because you seem, you watch the movie, the matrix. Sure. Yeah. There's a part where Neo goes to see the Oracle for the first time in her kitchen and above the door, I don't know if people spotted this, but it says there's a phrase, a simple phrase, uh, know yourself. And mm. I, and I think for guys, part of our journey here, as we're going on this quest, to realize and reveal like our potential and, and more of our purpose. I think you need two things. You need the curiosity to know yourself and then the courage to be yourself, which is a different, mm. different thing, right? You do curiosity to know yourself. People do, uh, you know, they do therapy or they do plant medicine or they do meditation or they journal, they get the introspection, right? But then being that person is a different game. That's a different conversation in a world full of other people's opinions and expectations and their fear of making a mistake, not looking good. But going back to knowing yourself, these four animals is the biggest lever because once you know it, you know how you can not only learn and read and remember better, personalize for your brain type because everyone learns different. Because I realize it's not how smart you are, it's how are you smart. Most of us ask like how smart my partner is or how smart my kids are, how smart my coworkers are. It's not how smart you are. It's how are you smart? And we all are smart in different ways, specifically these four areas. So imagine this, uh, you have a brain code, C-O-D-E. And the C stands for, these are the letters. I'll make them really easy acronyms, right? To make it easy to remember if you're not taking That's good notes. for me. I'll, I'll take yeah. all of that. I, I need all yeah. the help I can get. <laughs> the code, the C is the cheetah. And this goes on what you're saying. A cheetah is their mark, their trait that defines them is action and mm. strong, strong intuition, which is, you're right, different than feelings. And so cheetahs are the fastest animals on the planet, right? They thrive in fast-paced environments. They adjust and they adapt according to the situation. They they lean into their intuition because they're not really doing so much more thinking about it. They're going more with their intuition. That allows them to go fast, right? 
Um, and you can think about who would be that. You know, entrepreneurs would fall in that category. Athletes would fall into that category, right? And we could give famous examples also as well. The O in code are your owls. And owls are the defining trait. They're logical. Mm. Just like that white cap, they look for facts and figures. They look for data. Now, even if you just think about it, owls and cheetahs, they they act differently. They communicate differently. They would invest differently, right? Um, and they would they would lead differently. And you can even hire for these traits or manage based on these traits. The D in code are your dolphins, and your dolphins are they're defined by their trait of creativity. All right, these are your visionary, these are your visionaries, your creative visionaries. They are often people that have a vision for their lives or the future of their business that maybe other people can't see yet. Um, like maybe a Walt Disney or a JK Rawlings or somebody in that in that vein. Um, they are great pattern recognizers and, and problem solvers also as well, because they can imagine different scenarios and outcomes. And then finally, the last animal in code, the E in code stands for elephants. And their defining trait is empathy. These are your collaborators. These are people that hold a group together. They're your community builders. They're extremely uh, loyal, high levels of compassion and compassion and EQ, emotional quotient. Now, if you're thinking about this, people could take this quiz. We made it for the first time free. Um, we, there's no charge, nothing to buy. You go to mybrainanimal.com, mybrainanimal.com. And it only takes four minutes, multiple choice. Choose the answers that you feel some of them might be like, Oh, I could go with this one or this one. Just the one that you feel just closely intuitive is like, this represents me. Yeah. And then you'll get a detailed report on personalized learning based on your animal, how you can read faster, how you can remember people's names, but not only that communication styles, because everything, everything gets filtered through it. So I realized it's, again, it's, it's like, if you're learning something, you have a certain brain type, animal type, and the teacher has a different, different animal type. Sometimes it could be a subject matter that you're actually interested in, but you're just not connecting with the teacher because mm. their style and your style is different. So you're like two ships in the night and you you pass each other and you don't even know that the other one is there, right? And that's why it's so important. And even down not only to learning styles, but also communication styles. I mean, you think about a, a cheetah who's fast, they communicate fast too. They're direct, they're decisive, they get straight to the point right? Because they have to be concise and focused on the words they use are very action oriented words. They dislike beating around the bush because it just takes too much time. Mm -hmm. Right. And mm -hmm. now if you're taking an owl, they would communicate differently. Also, they would be more analytical. They would be more methodical. They prefer details that maybe the cheetah could bypass, right? They, they want communication. That's very logical, very presenting facts and figures and, and, and data. Now, now it's interesting because often these two people could be married, right? And so they would communicate differently. And then where they bump heads is usually in their brain type because they buy differently, they invest differently, they communicate love differently also as well. And then finally, the, the D and the E, the dolphin would communicate as an example, since they think in pictures, they are, are visionary. They are more expressive. A picture is worth a thousand words, right? So they speak about the bigger picture as opposed to the micro, right? They think about uh, future plans. They talk about innovative ideas. Then they have a lot of enthusiasm and passion, and excitement around these possibilities. And finally, the E are your elephants. And since they're highly empathetic, they are very collaborative. So they use words like we and us as opposed to I and, and my, right? Mm. They are very keen elephants because they're high empathy and EQ on understanding and validating the feelings and the perspectives of other people, right? They're also very team oriented. They emphasize group, uh, like group unity, mm. right? They're very, they use inclusive language and they're more patient with people and their communication styles because it takes time to listen and it takes time to make people feel heard and understood and, and valued. So like I'm going through this, but in when you get the report, you'll see models for selling to different styles because your sales presentation as a cheetah would be very different than an owl likes to buy, if that, if that makes sense. And so we, we built this out and it's a big part of the book. And the quiz is also in the book and also many more examples in the book, you know, then we could, you know, chat about. But yeah, I just feel like 
we're talking about intuition and that's a high, that's a high uh cheetah quality so i'm curious when you when you take the quiz and people could take it and 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 post like we we send people artwork based on their animal you could post it and you know tag us both in it so we get to see it and uh, i'll yeah. repost some you know cuz i'm curious what your listeners are mostly yeah, I, I'm I'm actually curious about that too. So we'll promote that, and I'll do it myself. I I have an idea of what I already am. Um, you know, I'm I'm sure most people do, but it's good to get that that confirmation. I, it's interesting because as you were saying this, I was going through. I had a conversation with a good friend of mine uh, just yesterday, and he was sharing with me a business idea that he wants me to be involved with, which I'm actually really looking forward to being involved with. And he is a dolphin, and so yeah. he he was sharing all of this. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. I got it. I got it. Like, what are we doing? Like, what's next? And so just to see you talk about this less than 24 hours after that conversation, it helps me compartmentalize. Oh, he's a dolphin, the visionary. And I'm like, yeah, I got it. I understand the vision. What do we do? Which is more of the cheetah, it seems like. Yeah, very, very much so. And I think when you know your animal type also, it takes the judgment away, like the self-judgment, because this is how we are. And it also takes a, a lot of the judgment we have over other people because they're just they're mm -hmm. just expressing their their brain animal type, if you will. Yeah, I think it, it, just hearing this for the first time, it, it would allow me to be a little bit more patient and allow me to maybe take a step back and let a person express themselves in a way that's important to them versus me wanting to just move along with whatever it is. Yeah, and also we're not stuck at any one animal. Sometimes, uh, you know, and, and the other thing is we could also see where our weaknesses are and we could train up those weaknesses also as well. And you could also, if you have a team or coworkers or family, you could also have them take the the quiz. It only takes four minutes, kind of like what Game of Thrones character are you or, or whatever. But what it allows you to do is once you know what the, it, it just makes it a lot easier to communicate, to be able to to learn also as well. But you could level up like we had our our team take the the assessment obviously and did you know what 100 percent of our customer service team are elephants and this we didn't sense. hire we didn't hire that for that but people will go into their element where they're going to get a job or a role or responsibility based on their strengths and customer service empathy community these are our community builders you know that their success that that other people's success is their success right they're compassionate and they want to serve and support uh, you know my my ceo are you know my business partner of almost 20 years she's a, a dolphin because she has this vision for for our mission building better brighter brains right no you know no brain left behind our cfo is an owl very data driven and so it's it's interesting. Our artists and our designers are, and a lot of our our, dolph our dolphins, right? Because they naturally are. And if even if you think of like um, like Friends, right? You could you always if you watch Star Trek, Star Wars, Game of Thrones, like everyone falls into an elephant. Like if you think about Ross, if for people who watch Friends, he's the professor, the scientist. He's always reading, studious. He's an owl, right? Joey is a cheetah, just acts on intuition. Right. It just doesn't just with thought. He just wants to put things in the application and goes and adapts. You have Phoebe, who's a dolphin, expresses mm. in song and, and art, and even her communication style is very passionate, right? It, and also, um, who else? Uh Monica would be an elephant. Monica is the one that wants to host everything. She wants to be the center of bringing everybody together. But you'll see this with James Bond. James Bond is is a, is a cheetah in the through of things, has to make split second decisions based on her, his own intuition. His boss, the head of MI6, M, she's an owl. She yeah, doesn't care about sure. emotions and people's feelings. She just, these are the facts, right? She, and she manages from that. Uh, MI6, uh, the M's uh, right hand money penny, she's the elephant, right? Brings the team together. Uh, the, the inventor on the team that makes the Q, who makes Q, the, the right. fancy watch and the, the, game, the cars that have all these gadgets dolphin right that's your creative so i give these as examples and you could go through history and say yeah einstein would be an owl and you know richard branson would you know would be this this cheetah and there, there are all kinds of examples but it's, it's you change the lens you see the world through and then it gives you power because you don't have to kind of just throw things on and hope certain things stick there's a tendency based on on, on the brain type uh, in terms of how people do anything 
Well, I also think the value of this could be in, again, I'm just using myself as an example, as a cheetah, I, I tend to be intuitive and I tend to be, I tend to take action quickly, which, you know, eight out of 10 times plays in my favor, but the other two ends up biting me in the ass pretty good from time to time. Yeah. Uh, and I, and I think this, having this framework might allow me to say, well, hold on a second. <laughs> I, this is what I want to do. And I feel like I'm about 90% sure, but let me go over to my out. Let me put the owl hat on here real quick and make right. sure that this is actually something that I want to do. So I don't fall into one of those, or the two out of 10 that, that comes back to bite me and haunt me. <laughs> yeah. And you could use it for hiring and, uh, hiring and managing people. You know, cheetahs tend to be more, uh, value efficiency and results oriented. You know, they might lean towards hiring candidates who demonstrate initiative and adaptability and decisiveness, an owl will hire differently, right? And owls would appreciate candidates who exhibit strong analytical skills and attention to detail, a more sy a systematic approach, right? Dolphins might gravitate towards creative, visionary, uh, communicative candidates, uh, people that think outside the box. Elephants would hire, you know, team players, right? Loyalty is very important for them. They would show uh, interper people who have interpersonal skills, you know, who people who demonstrate emotional intelligence, and so it, it helps you gives you kind of put a lens, getting the right people on the bus and then making sure those people on the bus are sitting in the right seats. You know, they're in roles that really allow them to, to be, feel fulfilled because they're playing to their strengths. And then they're surrounded by people who compliment them, you know, in right. different animals. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That's powerful. I, I do want to shift gears because as I was going through the, through the book, one of the things that I found interesting was, uh, and, and it's fairly or relatively recent development is this whole concept of AI. And, yeah. you know, you have people on both sides of the, the, the table as, as, to far, as far as, you know, AI is the destruction of humanity. Others look at AI as, as a tool for growth and opportunity. I see both. <laughs> I, I yeah. can see both sides of, of that coin. Uh, but you talk a lot about AI as, as a tool to enhance our ability to think, enhance our ability to perform. And I'm curious with your take on that. Yeah. So the new version of the book is all about momentum. Like the, it still has all the, the amazing content for mastering your mindset, your motivation, so you don't procrastinate and all the methods for accelerated learning and brain optimization. The new content that we add is are things that would enhance momentum and so knowing your brain type and the brain type of other people will give you more momentum and power and more velocity mm -hmm. towards your goals. AI is also one of those chapters that we added because we wanted to update the book for a post-pandemic AI world. And so AI for me is not artificial intelligence. It's more augmented intelligence. When you augment something, you're partnering or you're using it as a support tool, right? And so my question for writing that chapter and it's got so many usable things you could do is how do you use AI to enhance your HI, your human intelligence, right? Mm. And we give all kinds of examples from AI curated content to AI driven uh, personalized learning plans to AI, you know, micro learning systems to scheduling review reminders to uh, AI driven focus tools to even like uh, like we have a podcast also as well. And sometimes I don't get the book in time if, if, if the guest happens to be an author. And I don't like to read on screens because I don't need another excuse to be on a screen. I like, like, like physical books. And you could go into AI and say, you know, summarize this book for me. Or I'm a, I want to have a thoughtful question with this author. Propose 10 questions that they haven't been asked before that my audience specifically uh, would would connect with something like you know the reason why our brain types can change over time is something called neuroplasticity because we could change our thoughts our beliefs our feelings our strategies because our brains can make new connections but if i mention neuroplasticity and people want to learn what that is instead of googling it and seeing some formal definition you can go into ai and say explain to me the concept of neuroplasticity as if i am eight years old, mm. right? And it will give you some nice, really uh, story-driven things, visual things that will give you a good foundation that you could build on and add to and refine over, over time. But all the principles in Limitless Expanded, you know, how to remember names, how to be able to give a speech without notes, how to learn multiple languages, all that, you could use AI to enhance that also. 
you could take some of the tools that I talk about, like mind mapping, uh, which is a sophisticated whole brain note-taking technique. And you could say, hey, mind map this podcast episode for me. And it'll put out the branches and the trees or create Jim mentioned his favorite brain foods or the 10 things, the keys to optimize your sleep or something. And you could say, hey, I want to memorize that and give a talk about it. Create for me a memory palace, which is one of the techniques we talk about in the book in depth. It's a 2,500-year-old uh, technique that they used in ancient Greece to memorize poetry and, and talks and everything. And you know, you could ask AI to support you and create that that story arc for you. And so there's there's an, you know, vocabulary. It could give you retrieval questions when you're reading something. It could prompt you to test how much you're actually retaining. AI can measure your reading speed, uh, your reading comprehension. I mean, it just goes on and on. And so in the book, we put very specific prompts and things you could do to learn any subject or skill in a fraction of the time, utilizing AI and the principles of accelerated learning that we talk yeah, about in the book. That's powerful. I, I know that I, I've come across unique ways to use AI from writing product descriptions to learning about different things. Are there are there certain programs that, I mean, obviously chat GPT is one that's, that's huge. I think most people would be aware of. Are there other AI type programs that you would recommend or, or personally use? There, there are, I mean, I, I focus on a lot of the AI chat programs and our, we have the largest learning accelerated learning Academy in the world students in every country, 195 nations. And so we have a quick bot that we fed with all our courses and all our books mm. and all the material. So as an added benefit, when people are learning to triple their reading speed and not only that, but comprehension and retention, they could go there for a 24 hour coach. That's been because our public programs aren't available to AI outside because they're behind a, you know, a wall, sure. if you will. Sure. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, so we, we, we've created our, our own customized so people could have kind of me on demand as an example, our team uses, AI, all the different functions and mid-journey, everything for their specific roles. There's not one member of our team that doesn't use AI for something. My specialty happens to be in the rare area of improving performance and intelligence. So for focus, there are AI tools that monitor your online activity, can help you reduce distractions and keeping you more you know, concentrated on, on your task at hand. For memory, there are AI platforms that can provide optimally time review reminders saying like there's something we teach called space repetition on how to space information out. So it could go from your short term to long-term memory, um, you know, and then we're building like a speed reading kind of really amazing AI platform ourselves, but we're, we're building it ourselves, but certainly I'm not an AI expert in terms of the broad platforms that are out there. What I'm interested in is utilizing some of the fundamental ones to, to accelerate achievement, accelerate performance and overall, uh, learning faster. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I like AI just for the shortcut of things. It was shortcut time savings, um, financial savings as well. You know what you used to have to hire somebody to do, you can all funnel through AI. And I know, as I say that people are thinking, well, you know, like, that'll put people out of work. Well, yeah. Welcome to human evolution. You know, this is, this is the yeah. way it goes. That doesn't make and, me feel bad every... that somebody loses a job. Every every technology has done that, right? When we when we had cars, the, the people's job is something like every everything, the internet. But also, it's not. So my perspective is like AI won't necessarily take away our job. People who use AI will be more valuable in the marketplace than people who don't, and they'll take the jobs of people who just refuse to use it. I think it's like kind of like a fad. But for me, technology is not so much good or bad. Technology allows this conversation to happen, right? So like, it's, it's a good thing. It allows like all these things to, you know, to happen to, for you to educate, entertain, empower, connect. Um, but it's like fire. Fire is a form of early technology in a way. And fi it's just how it's applied. Fire could cook your food and fire could burn down your home, right? It's just how it's being, being utilized, you know? And so I'm very optimistic for its applications for people that says like, hey, this is kind of like not really sure it's like the internet like the internet's not going anywhere anytime soon right and if people refuse to utilize it they're just at a disadvantage yeah. and my thing is at a meta level you could use ai to help you to learn ai i mean how meta is that <laughs> you could actually use it saying hey i want to learn to be an ai expert how would i go about doing it and then apply our accelerated learning models on top of it and uh, and you're going to get some you're going to get much better results in in less time I saw this a lot. My, my previous background was financial planning and that was, 
eight, nine years ago. <clears throat> and I saw this a lot where there was new technology, not AI the way that we view it now, but there were bots and there were quote unquote robo advisors that were coming online that could do a significantly better job because it would eliminate all the emotional decision-making uh, from, from the process of financial from financial planning, which is, which is good in the, in the, in the grand scheme of things. Um, but you'd have these old time advisors who were like, well, you know, they, they can't do it as good as me and uh, it'll never replace human interaction. And these are the guys who are out of business. They're all retired or out of business now because they couldn't get on board with the fact that there's new technology that you can either buck and reject, or you can embrace and utilize for the betterment of yourself and your clients in this case. And that, and that's exactly right, Ryan. Like it's what the number one skill in my opinion that people need to master is our ability to adapt, mm. our ability to learn, to unlearn, and to relearn, because that's the only change is the only constant, right? So our ability to learn rapidly and translate that learning into action is the ultimate competitive advantage. And that's why learning how to learn is a meta skill, the most important skill, because it makes all other skills easier. Meaning that if you want to create wealth and whatever wealth is in a relationship and your health and money, right? Impact. You want to create some kind of treasure. You need to be able to do certain things. And in order to do those things, you need to upgrade your knowledge, skills, and your abilities. And our ability to process knowledge, to adapt, you know, new skills and new abilities is paramount. It's kind of like, if you can learn how to learn, which means you could focus, you could think, you could retain information, you could read faster, you could do all these things. What can you apply that to? Everything. You could apply it towards money, medicine, marketing, martial arts, Mandarin, everything in your life, music, everything gets easier when you can learn how to learn. So the book Limitless Expanded is literally an owner's manual for your brain to have your best brain possible, optimize your sleep, what are the best brain foods, how to reduce stress, um, all of that. And in the best supplements in the new book, we for the very first time in 30 years of coaching, I've never talked about uh, brain nutrients and supplements like nootropics, but that yeah. gives you momentum. When you could when you take something, it helps you with your focus or your mood or your memory or your mental vitality, and you're not suffering from brain fog and all that, you could, you become unstoppable, right? And so the idea here is if you can learn how to learn, so the book is how to supercharge your brain, which is the hardware, the three pound gray matter between your ears. And then the software is how to read faster, how to remember languages, how to give a speech without notes, how to remember client information, product information, remember names and faces, so much more. Yeah, it's like everybody that I've had on the podcast and I've interviewed over, gosh, 460 successful men now. That's amazing. And yeah, it's been pretty incredible. I, I'm yeah. the I'm the greatest recipient of it. I mean, I'm I like I got to be honest. Like I learned something from everybody who comes on, and I get to ask the questions I want to ask. So it works out pretty pretty well. Hopefully, guys are served in the meantime. But um, everybody who comes on believes their thing is the most important thing. Yeah. And, and I can appreciate that. I really can. I'm glad that there's people who are so passionate about everything from jujitsu to, to hunting, to writing, to you name it. Right. Mm -hmm. But I, I, I am on your side that this, but outside of spirituality, yeah. I think this is the most important thing because it impacts literally every other aspect of your life. Yeah. Ima imagine everyone who's listening that if there was a genie could grant you any one wish, but only one wish, you would, everyone would ask for more wishes, right? Hey, give me a million wishes, limitless wishes. If I was your learning genie and I could grant you any one learning wish, I can make you an expert or master, you know, like in any one subject or any one skill. I mean, would people choose hunting or coding or jujitsu or would it be learning how to learn because that's the equivalent of asking for limitless wishes, because mm. then you could just apply that towards jujitsu or dance or, you know, all the things you need to remember to fly a plane, to, to be able to, you know, do well with your investments. All of that comes from focus, thinking, you know, reading, retaining, implement, all of that. So I'm kind of biased, but it's, 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 it's the biggest needle mover, because if you've seen people who are successful and you've interviewed so many of them, Genius leaves clues, right? These are people who constantly upgrade their knowledge, skills, and abilities to be who they are, and the results show it. Well, when you can get to the point, you were talking about Matrix earlier, when you can get to the point where all you have to do is download some program, and it's yeah. like, I know Kung Fu, let me know, because you are going to be a wealthy, wealthy man when you figure that one out. <laughs>
Um, yeah, I do want to go. Like go ahead. It's a, yeah. I mean, I, I can't wait. I can't wait for that day. You know, I, 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 I do you I'll, think I'll something like that is, is feasible? I mean, is that something yeah, I, there's a right lot of now, information with downloading stuff into the yeah, brain? I'm even about even that. with AI right now, this is people. Okay. So in, in the book, we talk about the, the four horsemen of the mental apocalypse. And if we're too dependent on technology, then we just get weak, right? And nobody wants to be weaker, but the truth is digital deluge it's information overload that's that's creating health issues because the information is doubling at Disney speed, but how we read it and learn it, it's the same. So that growing gap creates stress, right? Mm. Information anxiety, higher blood pressure, compression of leisure time, more sleeplessness. That's why we teach speed reading, accelerated learning to help close that gap. So you could be more, so you catch up, keep up and get ahead. Then there's digital distraction. Every ring, ping, ding, app notification, social media alerts, like we're, we're flexing our distraction muscles all the time. So how do we focus when we need to pay attention in a meeting or with our kids or, or something else? And, and then that's why we teach focus and concentration. Then there's digital dementia, which is this, I, the, the heavy reliance is a real health ter, uh, healthcare term on our devices to hold memories for us. Like think about how many phone numbers you knew growing up, right? Yeah. All of them, but how many knew all, you know All now? the ones you needed, sure. None, right. I don't, and now we I know, don't need like, my kids' numbers. Exactly. And here's, but here's the thing. I don't want to memorize 500 phone numbers, but it should be very concerning. We've lost the mental fitness to remember one or a pin number or a passcode or a seed phrase or something that we were going to say, or something we just read or someone's name, right? So memory is a muscle. It's use it or lose it. But digital dementia is saying, Hey, we don't have to use our memory. And then digital deduction that I talk about in the book and ways of thinking and the memory, by the way, is the largest chapter in the book. Digital deduction is where the technology is doing the thinking for you with algorithms is telling you, you know, what to eat is telling you how to get from here to there. So we don't have to develop the visual spatial intelligences that we used to have, or even as hunter gatherers, we needed to have for our survival because a, a piece, a tool is doing it. But here's the thing. If technology, technology is a tool for us to use, but if the technology is using us, then, then we become the tool, right? And that's mm. a, that's a big problem. I believe with the growth of in the embrace of, of artificial intelligence, AI, it's more of a reason we should get our brains in shape to be able to keep up with, with all of that and then maintain our curiosity, our imagination, our ability to implement the stuff that we, that we learn. So I feel like, like what makes us human, like think about it, every creature in nature has a superpower. Some could, animals could fly, some could breathe underwater, some could go really fast, some could are really strong. Now, human beings, we're not any of those things. But because our superpower is our mind, we can fly. Because our superpower is our mind, we can go really fast or go underwater, right? And this is most people out of fear right now because of the current environment, they're shrinking what's possible to fit their minds. And what I'm saying is a big mis I think it's a big mistake. We should do the opposite. We should expand our minds to fit all that that's really possible. Mm. You So you said the... I didn't catch it. You, I, I've got distraction, dementia, deduction. I didn't catch the first one in what you called yeah, it. Yeah, digital, de of... digital deluge. It's the deluge, information. Okay. Yeah, it's a term because I also want it to be all Ds to alliterate. Yeah, digital deluge yep. is the overload and overwhelm. Like take how many people who are listening, how many guys right now have books on your shelf you haven't read yet? And it of becomes course, shelf help yeah. and not self-help, right? Shelf help, <laughs> not self-help. Because, But the reason why is buying a book is a different skill set than reading that book. Now, reading is a skill. You weren't born and went into the waiting room and just started reading magazines. It's a skill we learned. But when's the last time we took a class or a training called reading? What were we, six years old? And so yeah. that, that's the problem with the school system. The school teaches you what to learn, math, history, science, Spanish. There are zero classes on how to learn it. So going to your kids or going to your business partner and say, hey, focus study this for this meeting or this test. That's like going to somebody saying, play the ukulele, who's never taken a class on how to play the ukulele. It's just like when you say someone focus or study or, or remember this, like we haven't learned how to do that. And so, you know, I, my, my goal is to fill in the gaps so that way people are really prepared for this post-pandemic AI world. Because again, our brain is our number one wealth building asset that we have. And that's the best thing you could do. Everyone upgrades their technology. You upgrade your car, you upgrade your phone, you upgrade your apps, whatever. The most important technology is the human brain, the, the, the technology that's created all the other technology outside of us. But people aren't, aren't you know, like this is, this is why this conversation is so important. 
Yeah, it's powerful. I, I do want to cover, I know we're kind of bumping up against time here real yeah. quick, but I do, I am very interested in when you talk about nootropics, I, I've always, not always, but in the past kind of written it off and, and said, this is woo woo, this is BS. And then I think about it, you know, if, if you were to have two shots of whiskey, you're going to be impacted by that. Uh, if you're going to eat an edible, you know, you're going to be impacted by that. If it, <laughs> These are all chemicals that you're consuming and we know that it impacts our body in certain ways. No and doubt. yet- when you talk about nootropics and you talk about supplements, yeah, to me, at least in the past, it's kind of been like, ah, that stuff doesn't work or it's not necessary. But clearly, these chemicals have the ability to alter our brains for the better and worse, too. No doubt. So I always prefer people get it from food. Like I'm a foodie. And even in the book, the original edition, which is included in the expanded version, I talk about the best brain foods. Because what we eat matters, especially for our gray matter. There's a whole area that I talk about in the book about neuronutrition, that your brain is only 2% of your body mass, but it requires 20% of nutrients. And some of those nutrients are different than the rest of your body. Because obviously your mm. brain is part of your body, right? Uh, to help you to focus, to help you to remember. And so I'd, almost, I'd rather people get it from food, but if they're not getting it from food, which a lot of people aren't, and now I'm not a nutritionist or a medical doctor, people could do a food sensitivity test. They can do a nutrient profile test because if you're lacking vitamin E, like our D, you're not, your brain's not going to work as well as it could. You could learn the speed reading techniques and you'll get a certain benefit, but if you're lacking the omega-3 fatty acids, right? So for example, eggs is a great, they're a great brain food if people allow that in their diet. The, the, the choline in eggs is, is key because it leads to acetylcholine. It's a vital role in brain health. So if you're not getting it from eggs or soybeans or some, some food, then you might need to supplement in it because it could definitely, there's so many benefits for your health. I mentioned omega-3s. Your brain is mostly fat. So good food sources, salmon, sardines. But if you're not eating that, you need your omega-3s, particularly the DHAs. So you could supplement with DHAs or your omega-3 fatty acids, your B vitamins, your magnesium. Those are supplements. Probably my favorite supplement is uh, for the brain is creatine. Like most mm. of us use it for workouts, right? But it is so many, is so well researched for cognitive health and cognitive performance, especially when it comes to your mitochondria and ATP energy. For your, for your brain. So people struggle in that area. It's, it's worth looking into. But then you have your nootropics that could give you a little bit of an edge. And things like L-theanine. L-theanine is, is an amino acid. It's found in green tea. So I, I prefer people get it from green tea, right? But if you're not doing that, it's a very popular nootropic. It helps re with relaxation without the drowsiness and it enhances brain function, right? There's another one, uh, uh, Ayurvedic herb called Bacopa, which has been shown to, to improve cognition and memory. Everything that I put in the book, it's all human studies. So I reference all the human studies. And again, not everything's for everybody, right? But it's just to give people options. And again, I'd rather go food, you know, for it, but like uh, rhodiola, it's a Scandinavian herb that helps reduce mental fatigue and improve cognitive function. So people could look into it, but we, we document all of them there. We make it very, very simple. Um, the creatine, the curcumin, like turmeric is a great brain food, helps to lower systemic inflammation. And, you know, that could lead to challenges. The active ingredient in turmeric is curcumin, which is an very anti-inflammatory, huge antioxidant benefits. It could cross the blood brain barrier, uh, which could have been shown to improve uh, cognitive function, uh, particularly in, in patients with, with Alzheimer's. Then there's like lion's mane mushroom, which could be up with BDNF and you know, certain neurotropic effects. Caffeine with L-theanine is really good. You know, a lot of people use caffeine as a well-known stimulant, but you add yeah. L-theanine and it could help you improve your brain function without all the, um, I'm very sensitive to caffeine, so without all the jitters. You know, that could come from a ginkgo biloba, which helps with blood flow. I mean, there's these things that people could look into um, that are well-researched that could be an option. Yeah, it's powerful. Well, I want to be respectful of your time. I know how busy you are, so I do want to close it out today. Um, if you would, let the guys know where to connect with you, obviously, yeah. to pick up a copy of the um, expanded you. edition, and uh, we'll go from there. Yeah. So we have a podcast. Um People could subscribe just to look for my name, Jim Quick. You just have the spell of where, right? K W I K, or on YouTube. Also, if it's not your podcast app, we have good 
1.3 million subscribers there. We put in daily content. The book is at limitlessbook.com. When you get the book there, you could actually redeem your, your receipt and we'll give you 13 days of brain training. It's a full course. It's not like a continuing thing, but I teach you the basics of speed reading, memory enhancement, focus and concentration. So when the book arrives, you like, you're going to finish that book. So that's why I love about it. We donate all the proceeds to charity to build schools for boys and girls and countries that don't, in villages that don't have schools. Um, and then uh, mybrainanimal.com, take the quiz, post it online, tag Ryan, tag myself so we get to see it. I'll repost some of my favorites, you know, also, also just because I, you know, want to be supportive of the community. But I, I appreciate you having me back on the show. I can't believe, wow, six, seven years just flies by. Isn't that wild? And, uh, it, it really yeah. is crazy. Well, Jim, especially I appreciate you. Go, yeah, go ahead. Thank, no, no, especially in this day and age, it's like dog years. So it feels like, like, like 50 years ago almost. But my final <laughs> words for everybody is like, do something, you know, like maybe you could post even and tag us and just say like one thing you're going to do for your brain the next 24 hours that you weren't doing before. And I'll repost some of my favorites, gift out a couple of copies of a Limitless Expanded just to your community as a thank you. But I really believe, guys, that there's a version of yourself that's patiently waiting. And the goal is we show up every single day until we're introduced. Awesome. That's powerful, Jim. Thank you very much. I appreciate you.